here's the uh, rule set, the basic introduction to Powers at B, which is the card combat game that uses a set of dice instead of just what's on the cards. Add a little bit of that random element in there. Um, what you should have starting out is right here we made some kind of makeshift uh, blocker so I can't see your rolls when you make them. Uh, you should have five dice, uh, those are going to be included obviously. You should have eight of these little tiles uh, and each one of those represents your health. Uh, you should have a deck of somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 cards. Um, they should be the same number each. I think I have them at 23 right now. And then also you should have this giant Tupperware, the shoddily made separated Tupperware of uh, hit counters. One side should be five, the other side, uh, other side should be ten. Now, at this point you should go ahead and shuffle your deck. We've done that already. Now, to open up for your first turn, what we're going to do is keep drawing cards until you get a playable character card. Now, that character card is going to have a cost of zero by that tiny little fireball. A willpower cost of zero, and it should have a giant one up the top left corner under the name. Keep drawing until you get one of those. Is this one good? Yep, that's fantastic. Go ahead and play him right here. He's going to be your active fighter for the first turn. Alright, and here's mine. All right, and at this point, you're going to go ahead and reshuffle your deck. So you can go ahead and cut if you want to, or just pretend. There we go. It's perfect. Pretend you're shuffling. Just shove that in there somewhere. All right. Now, uh... Oh, is it supposed to not be... Uh, oh. Yeah, no. It's the other way around. Okay, now, what you're going to do to start off your first turn is just go ahead and roll your dice. Make sure that I can't see them. All right. Now... I don't know what Peter's going to do, but uh, go ahead and allocate uh, whatever you want to use. The swords, uh, what you do with those is those allow you to do a basic attack. And that's, you can tell what your basic attack is because the sword up here has five, so you can do five damage per sword that you have. Um, the tiny medallions, which are the circles with the stars in them, those let you draw a card. Uh, the shields let you block, so for however many of those, you can block that many uh, normal attacks. Uh, the little fireballs, those are willpower, and then the little wizard's hat, that's a special attack indicator which will allow you to do a special attack. Alright, now what you do is, before I can see them, go ahead and allocate your uh, dice so that you know what you want to do with them. Uh, you can save however many dice you want to, and then you'll roll the difference next turn. Obviously you can only save up to four dice, so that you have to roll at least one next turn. All right, so I went ahead and made my decision. Uh, Peter, are you good? Or, player two, have you made your decision? You haven't. Well, go ahead and make your decision, player two. Jesus. I know you're new, but come on. Can I play all of them? Huh? Can I play all of them? Yeah, yeah, you can. there's nothing stopping you from playing all of them. You can save however many you want to, okay. um, or you can play all of them in one turn. All right. Okay, so you ready? Alright, go ahead and show me what you have. Alright, so... Alright, so you have one sword, so you can use one normal attack. You have one shield, so you're blocking one of mine. Uh, you also have two medallions, so you can draw two cards, and then you have one willpower, which you could have saved or done whatever with. That does essentially nothing for you, uh, because... <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so go ahead and draw your two cards. Those will be in your hand to make sure I can't see those. There you go. There's your hand. I bet they're amazing. You look excited. All right. Um, all right. So you attack me once. So you do five damage. I'll get a little five damage indicator. And then I attack you twice. Uh, so I'll give you a 10 because I do two fives. Math! Uh, but you do block. So that gets negated. So it's only five. All right. So we each have five damage. And uh, we go ahead and start our next turn. So you're down to 45 health. And I'm down to 45 health too. How a snowman does that much damage to a fully armored person, I don't know. But we're going to figure that out together. All right, go ahead and roll again. Next turn. So, okay. So I'll just go ahead 
and tell you what I'm doing. Just to make it easier for everyone. I'm saving three of my dice, and I'm going to use two of them this turn. All right, you ready? Okay. Go ahead and show me what you did. All right, so you're going to use those three. I'll block one of them, so you do ten more damage to me. Then I attack you once, so I do five damage to you. So now you have ten. So here, let's do math. There we go. All right. And are you ready for the next turn? Okay. God damn it, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and roll, and you can roll as well. Uh, All right, this actually works out pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and use one, and then uh, tell me whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and show me what you got. All right, I'm using those three as well. So you draw two more cards, and I draw three. So in the powers of B, there are going to be situations that you're eventually going to run into, and I want to make sure that we have those covered. That way you don't have to watch an entire game happen. All right, so if you look here, all right, just pretend that this is the last game, because for all you know, it is. We've been playing all along. Um, haven't we, Player 2? Yes, we have. Thank you, Player 2. All right. So, you can have two characters behind this character. These are in standby. They can't attack or be attacked uh, normally. Some characters do have special abilities that can't attack players in standby or characters in standby. If they're damaged, like, oh, Shark Commando suddenly has 40 health instead of 50. Every turn, deduct 10. So they heal while they're in standby, so you have some incentive to switch them out. If you switch characters out, that's all you can do that turn. That's your only action. Um, now, if you have a card that you can upgrade, you can tell which cards can be upgraded by this little flare around the number one here. If there's that little flare, you can upgrade them. Like Snow Golem, he can't be upgraded. He just has a boring circle. Nobody loves Snow Golem. So he's poor and alone in this world. So, here's a card that Ursa can be upgraded to. You can upgrade her by spending two willpower in your turn, and you just play her like a normal card. So, you happen to roll two willpower, just bam, go ahead and put her on top. You've replaced it. Uh, any damage that Ursa had before, so let's say, because when we cut, she had 15 damage. Any damage she had stays. So, like before, 15 would have taken her down to 35. Uh, 50 in this case will put her down to, what would that be, 60? Yeah, that'd be 60. Um, she also has a passive stat, or a passive ability. That can happen at any time. So if you roll willpower with Ursa, for instance, uh, those can be used as either a shield or a sword. So that's nice. Um, to use a special attack, this has probably been explained. You've probably read the rules, I hope, by now. And you're looking at this for clarification. But if you roll this token, that's a little sorcerer's hat, uh, that's what allows you to use special abilities, and then you also have to be able to pay for it in willpower. So this one only requires one. So by playing both of those, I can now use Shield Break. So that's nice. Now, if you look at items, let's go ahead and whip one of those out real quick. Here, a potion. Because you can clearly tell it's a potion. It says potion up here. But, uh, up here it'll have the giant willpower cost. It just costs that much to play. So let's say that in addition to these, so you can use Shield Break, let's say you also got another one. So you can heal her in the same turn. That deducts uh, 30 damage, so she goes back to being perfectly fine, uh, and then can go about your turn. Um, so what happens when your character is heavily damaged? What What is this life down here and what does it do? Basically, let's assume We'll go back to smaller numbers. We'll say that Fast Goer is out front, because I only have to put two tokens on him until he has 10 health left. All right, so whenever your character gets defeated at all, so Snow Golem magically attacks for 10, even though he can't. Um, so the Fast Goer is out. That's 30 health. He has to be discarded. Now, whenever you discard a character, flip one of your little tokens. Now your health bar is shrinking. Um, if you have any more attacks after that, if you can do any more damage, each extra token you have 
also inflicts one health bar worth of damage. So let's say that you had two extra tokens there after I was already defeated that you hadn't used yet. That would be three total for my turn. And the goal of the game is to keep going until uh, one player has none of these left, until they're all flipped over. And that's the win condition. If you run into cards, just keep going because the game can still progress without cards um, or without any cards left in your deck or your hand. Um, if you have no characters left, you can end the game because it's an eventuality that you'll lose. You don't need to delay it any more than that. Um, but yeah, that's it.